Hello and welcome to NDTV Profit. You're watching IPO Adda and my co company in focus uh, this time is KRN Heat Exchanges and Refrigerations Limited. The company's IPO is opening on September 25th, closes on September 27th, price between 209 to 220 rupees per share. Uh, it's a fresh issue of 342 crores, uh, uh, which means around a dilution of nearly 25% of equity is coming through IPO. And joining me is Santosh Kumar. Yadav, who is the chairman and managing director of company, and uh, Ashok Holani, who is the director at Holani Consultant, who is also the uh, BRLM or the book uh, lead, uh, uh, the lead manager for the for the issue. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Santosh and Mr. Uh, Ashok, thank you very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. Uh, Mr. Yadav, to begin with, sir, uh, give me a sense of uh, your business model, uh, the business you are in, and how. Uh, uh, and how many clients or you know the areas that you uh, cater to so good morning to all so my name is santosh kumar yadav and i am the managing director of the care and detection and refrigeration limited so we are the in business of hvac and r heating ventilation air conditioning and refrigeration so mainly we make heat exchanger for all uh, like commercial side uh, mainly for application like air cooled chiller, data center cooling, bus air conditioning, truck refrigeration, heat pump, <laughs> fan coil unit, and we do like B2B business. So we have main client like Daikin air conditioning, Snyder electric, Blue Star, <coughs> and Kirloskar chiller, and Klam event. And also we do export to UAE, Europe, and uh, North America market. So we started our company in 2017, so we complete almost six years. And last year, we applied for this award, DRHP, and it's approved now. So we are opening for 25th of September for main board IPO. So you are raising 342 crores. Uh, what is this going to be used for? So mainly it will be used for new subsidies called KRN HVC Products Private Limited. So we will use uh, almost 340 crore in this new venture <coughs> and the uh, rest of GCP, co General Corporate Affairs. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rulani, since you are the merchant banker for the company, um, your pricing is between 209 to 220 rupees per share. You did a pre-IPO placement at 200 <coughs> rupees. Um, how did you price the IPO? And because there are no listed peers, how do you uh, put a violation to a company? The, in regard to the valuation of the company, we have considered various factors for arriving in this particular price point. And the most important parameters is the growth story of the company from last three to four years. Company is operating at a margin of 19% EBITDA margin for last two continuous years, and a, and a splendid profit rate of 12%, 12.5% for last two years. And the company is also going into the investing into a uh, wholly owned subsidiary for setting up another manufacturing plant and it will be another state of art plant which they are coming up with a huge huge capacity probably one of the one of the largest plant for heat exchanger in particularly for heat exchanger in India and with the key strength they have they in, in their management with their workforce they are around employed around 40 engineers they have they work day and night sports are increasing on daily yearly basis so these are the factors, multiple factors, which we have taken into consideration and been able to set up this particular price band. Mm -hmm. And before going into this IPO, we have done two pre-placements, pre one at around 152 rupees in October 2023. Recently, we did at, at 200 rupees. So there is ample demand for this particular commission in the market. Mm -hmm. So going by the strength of the company, the future prospect which they enjoy, so we have appropriately valued this stock at 209 to 230. How do you value a B2B company uh, in this space? I mean, it's coming to nearly for forward earnings of 23, 24 times forward earnings of FI25. If I use your uh, compounded annual growth rate uh, numbers to project forward, so uh, how do you how do you look at uh, this uh, company on a valuation point of view? I understand that you already got a valuation from uh, one of 150 to 200 rupees from various uh, various uh, uh, you know pre-IPO placements. But uh, on a multiple point of view, how how do you look at the company? 
I look one thing for sure, but we we would assess in this company. The companies are not into B2, strictly to the B two B. They are into the business of manufacturing the specialized coils, which more of our technical nature, and demands a premium over the market. So that's why they are able to substantiate their double digit profit margins of twelve to thirteen percent for last two years, and looking after with with increasing their capacity. So that will help to company to boost their numbers in the first. In the in the future, secondly, and in regard to the profitability and valuation point of view, if you see that at current March 24 numbers, the stock is we have valued at pre-money of 25 price to earning ratio, which I think appropriately justifies the valuation of the company. Mm -hmm. I am not uh, going for forward P. I am going for the past P of March 24. That comes around 25. Okay, uh, Mr. Yadav. Uh, You are raising 342 crores. Uh, you've been growing at a healthy rate uh, of a top line of 308 crores in FY24. Uh, if if it's possible for you to give us an idea of when the new plant comes into play, uh, the Nimrana plant, where for which you are raising this fund, what is the kind of capacity that you will increase, uh, and what is the kind of potential revenue that can come in from from this? So you can see like uh, now we are around. Uh, 10000 square feet covered area so we are building almost 600000 square feet covered area so it's almost uh, 7x compared to existing so we are like uh, customer approaching to us and if you see last year compared to if you 20 to 24 so we are increasing our like export so we just uh, double the numbers in like 23 we supplying almost 16 customer and last 24 march we almost export 32 customer so are receiving inquiry from many of our export customer so we need like big capacity to cater the domestic market as well as export market <laughs> and mainly we are focusing on north america market so because north america market now they have anti dumping from china around 25% and they are keen to start supply from indian supplier but they need at least good supplier with good capacity good infrastructure so that's why we need already plan to big space so that we can maybe uh, make big uh, like dream plant and then we can supply to our domestic and as well as export so it's almost <coughs> capacity size like six time it will continue will grow and then we uh, like uh, buy already land and we started construction almost six month back and this already like uh, since uh, 16th of uh, like 15th of july we already invest in 32 crore on that uh, new capacity Mm -hmm. uh give me a sense of the current uh, contribution of exports to your top line i say uh, last balance sheet around 15% and uh, that do you expect that also to go up by nearly six times I means what is the kind of export contribution you for uh, see when the nimrana plant comes into play actually to cater export customers so you need uh, like single piece flow so earlier we when we started uh, with, uh, like one of one acre then next year we added another then third year added no <coughs> so that you can say ki existing facility the optimized plant we earlier we didn't thought to for such growth so <coughs> we expand like uh, optimized way but now we plan to make big facility in single go and then we can make uh, good layout single piece flow to receiving uh, many inquiry from our export customer domestic customer so that's we plan so for sure it will it will be will be achieved uh, give me a sense of your sourcing uh, thing yes. though you know the though you are increasing your capacity here basically to cater to the global markets uh, especially the us market uh, how do you how do you plan to augment your sourcing capacity because currently i think uh, most of your uh, sourcing comes from malaysia and vietnam uh to uh, these are two big countries from where you source most of the pro, uh, pro products uh what are you doing to reduce your you know dependency to both to malaysia and vietnam so for that uh, our indian government already <coughs> took the initiative under pli so you can say ki now one of malaysian vendor like mattube they already have factory in gujarat sanan they already started the production they already offered some of sample to us so under trial so hopefully in next few month we will start to supply from mattube as well as uh, hindalco 
have put their factory for copper tube in India based. So we are discussing with them as well and uh, Hindal Gold started like developing their <coughs> aluminium foil as well, Jindal side also they are developing aluminium foil. So I think under PLI uh, maybe three or four uh, new venture will come and uh, we are expecting in within year uh, make in India supply will start. So it's already like our stage is under developing and uh, I think our government took the good decision under PLI to develop these product in India. So by when do you expect uh, the import substitution to take place uh, in uh, for your sourcing? As per my personal opinion I think within one year we will change maybe 60 to 70 percent from domestic side and rest for export because for export maybe uh, to start domestic price will be maybe so higher side just to compete the international market so we will have to buy under advanced license from outside also so it will be the combination for the domestic as well as ex export so based on quality and price we will decide further when supply will start uh, also give me a sense on your you know receivable days because your receivable days have also gone up uh, if i'm not wrong uh, uh, you know Total uh, receivables is to the tune of 52 crores at the end of FI24, which is 17 percent of your revenue. Um, how do how are you managing your receivable days? Uh, your uh, networking capital days have also gone up to 88 days from 65 days. Actually, since last uh, almost six to eight month, government have started some new initiative. They asked uh, to our international uh, vendors to BIS certification and QCO certification. So they have deadline back. So we increase our inventory to uh, maybe continue our customer line. So, so we fear that maybe we cannot buy. So that's why we increase our inventory and customer side earlier we took some cost like uh, bill discounting from our customer. But uh, since last few months we are not getting uh, discounting. So that's why it's increased and also our turnover also increased. So it's, payment term is around uh, 60 days average, so it is big increase because of turnover in, and inventory increase. Uh, how do you plan to bring that down uh, because you are keeping a very high inventory day as well. Uh, if I'm inventory turnover is at 112 uh, versus 76 last year in FI23, so how do you plan to bring down your MA inventory days as well? So there will be two plan for like uh, uh, buying side, uh, we will try to Indian vendor, so we will reduce, able to reduce our inventory, of course. And customer side, uh, we are targeting more on export, so export side, we are uh, receiving advance also from some of customers. So I think uh, uh, we will work on both plant and maybe we are able to reduce both things. Mm -hmm. um, give me also a sense of, uh, you know, uh, of your order book because I read in your RHP that you get advanced order into intimations uh, from your customers uh, from six to six, uh, six to three to six months in advance. So, what is the current order book that you are sitting on? No, it's uh, like uh, we are not like seasonable company, so we have average order almost same remain con like around the year because we like supply. Uh, we first develop with our customer and then we start supply based on their uh, product manufacturing. So we have forecast from some of our customer like six months and firm order for one month, but it's rolling like around the month or around the year. So it cannot say a full year, they cannot PO for maybe a plus, uh, like they need after one month. So they, ex in case of export, we receive sometime two months prior or one month prior for domestic. Even we receive like four week or three week prior. So it's uh, like rolling. Give us an idea of what is the value of the order book that you're sitting on. Oh, roughly we will have always around uh, 40 CR. Okay. Uh, uh, another thing which it's I wanted. Rolling, uh, another thing which I wanted to get uh, indication on is, uh, you know, you mentioned, Mr. Olani also mentioned about the fact uh, your EBITDA margins are around 19 percent for last two, two years. Do you expect this margin to inch up uh, given the fact that you are looking at, uh, you know, domestic uh, sourcing of your raw materials or, uh, you know, uh, you know, is there any way that, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, increase that margin band uh, going forward? 
Uh, as I already said, uh, we are more focusing on, on North America and Europe market for export side. So, our margin is compared to domestic markets higher side on export. <coughs> so, it will be for sure improve and new facility like we will have, we are going to buy new machinery with advanced technology and some automation. So, productivity also will try to increase. So, we will try to remain same or for sure to try to increase. Mm -hmm. um, is there, uh, can you also give us an idea of the kind of cash flow generation that your business sees normally and what kind of cash flow we can see in op from an operating point of view? So, I think that uh, maybe Holani sir can uh, reply. Mr. Holani? In regard to the cash flow, yeah, in regard to the cash flow, the company uh, is, you know, la all the last three years is cash positive. The cash form operation is on the positive side. Although the company has been making the continuous capex investment in the last three years and has been invest investing heavily in the capex, that still the company is cash positive. And with this IPO proceed, which we are proposing to invest in our subsidiary for this capex project, so the revenue from operation will be come into the company and will increase the cash and cash by carry of the company for the future also. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my understanding is that the new plant will come in by April 2025. That means FY26 is when the revenues will start coming in yeah. from the new plant. Um, what is the kind of potential revenue that you see from this new plant? Right. So, as our RHP said, we are going to add uh, th three new product as well, uh, com like uh, existing product we are expanding the capacity <coughs> and we are going to add uh, a roll bond operator and the bar and plate it exchanger uh, as well. So it means uh, we are going to add th three new product with existing capacity increasing. So we will try to achieve maximum <coughs> turnover side. Okay. Hmm? Uh, my uh, my uh, final question to you is that you know you are dependent on some of the um, uh, metals, uh, copper and aluminium, uh, and this uh, and metals prices are volatile. Uh, how do you plan to you know hedge yourself against this volatility in prices? No, actually our business model is like that. We do uh, like last quarter average for LME copper, LME aluminium, and USD to INR. So we apply to our customers. So it means uh, we change each quarter of our pricing based on last quarter average. So we're not hedging, but it's applying average to on our customers. Because you get my question was because you get advance orders of one month or two months or you know six months in advance. Uh, how do you manage the cost uh, or or volatility in prices because of the changes in LME copper or aluminium? No, if uh, I said that our like business is around the year almost <coughs> same way, so we keep like uh, 60 days inventory and then each month requirement. So we need almost similar way. So we buying uh, each month similar quantity. So uh, we apply average. So I think it's uh, manageable. Okay, Mr. Uh, Yadav and Mr. Holani, uh, thank you very much for joining us on. IPO Adda, your company uh, KR and Heat Exchanges and Refrigeration IPO is opening on September 25th and closes on September 27th, price between 209 to 220 rupees per share. Uh, it's a fresh issue of 342 crores uh, that gives the company a market value of nearly 1400 crores at the upper end of the price band and it's 25% of equity which is coming through IPO. Thank you very much for joining us on NDTV Profit.